So I know you got a big game upcoming, obviously. Uh, just a couple of points I wanted to ask you about. Uh, obviously, Chris likes, want to get an update with him. And then also, if you can talk about Earl Timberlake, give an updated timeline maybe on his return, how you maybe you're looking to use him also. That would be great. Thanks. Um, well, as far as Chris is concerned, uh, he met with a, a doctor this morning. I haven't gotten the report yet. Uh, I probably will uh, as soon as I get off of this Zoom call, and then we'll know a little bit better what his status is. Earl is actually seeing the foot specialist uh, this morning. I haven't uh, gotten the, the, the results, but I'm thinking he's going to be out of his boot. At least I'm hoping that they'll get him out of the boot and he'll start his rehab process. We'll go now to David Froner from the Sun Sentinel. David? Hey, Coach. I uh, want to ask you about uh, Purdue coming up, your impressions from them early on. And uh, I saw they had a, a loss to Clemson. Uh, just what can you take uh, from, from that game, uh, You know, seeing another ACC team go up against them? Well, um, you don't look at just one game because, you know, our personnel is very different than Clemson's. You know, their five-man shoots threes. Our five-man does not. So this, this is more a matter of looking at um, Purdue's strengths, which is – um, a lot. Uh, they've got two huge guys inside. Will, Williams and, and Edie are a handful. They combine for 26 points a game. And uh, they're a little bit different. Edie's like 7'4", almost 300 pounds, and a handful in around the basket. Edie can also play with his back to the basket, but he's a very, very skilled player. He can shoot a three, he, he can handle the ball, he makes great passes. He's a heck of an offensive player and probably the best back to the basket player will, will play uh, this month because uh, he's, he's really a handful for any one individual. Their perimeter players are shooting the three extremely well. So their big guys challenge your interior defense, their, their perimeter players challenge your perimeter defense. And we're gonna have to have a great defensive effort if we're going to be able to, to uh, uh, be in the game for the entire game. And, and if I could just get one follow on, uh, you mentioned Chris Likes in the previous answer, is, is, is he at all uh, potentially able to play tomorrow if that report from the doctor comes back positive, or is he certainly out tomorrow? Well, I won't know that until we get the report. Okay. You know, I, the, the, the doctors look at it very, very differently than I do. Uh, a doctor looks at it as, is he healthy enough, and, and uh, can, he, can he actually uh, run and jump on the foot? I look at it as, hey, if he's in uniform, I'm playing him. If he's not in uniform, I'm not. Up next, we have Chris Stock from inside the U, Chris. Just maybe piggybacking off the, the likes injury, but just, Jim, your, your four guards with that, with likes, um, you know, with Earl down. Uh, is there, and Matt mentioned maybe a little, Anthony playing a little bit of three. Is there any thought of maybe moving Matt to a three? Have you been working at that? If Chris isn't able to go, to go with three guards, I mean, what are some things that you're thinking about uh, with your lineups? Okay, so let's talk about Matt's situation first. Um, we have no intentions of playing him at the three, primarily because he's worked so hard to learn the, the four. And as a freshman, I don't want to add things to his plate. Secondly, Anthony Walker played primarily the four last year as a freshman, but he was also... Um, uh, with us, so he learned some of the things at the three, and we've spent a great deal of time preparing him for the moment where he would play the three during this preseason. So Anthony's much better prepared physically and mentally to handle the adjustment of moving from the, the four to the three, much more so than, than Matt. Um, and we expect Anthony to play a good bit at the three tomorrow night. Up next, we have Steve Wine from the Associated Press. Steve, go ahead. Jim, uh, facing a Big Ten team is a different kind of test uh, for your young team. What are you most curious to find out about your own team tomorrow night that maybe you're not sure about at this point? 
Well, there's there's so many question marks. Um, you know, if we have Chris Likes or if we don't have Chris Likes, uh, we know we don't have Earl Timberlake. So if Chris Likes is out, we're reduced to really three guards. Uh, Harlan Beverly then would start at the point. Isaiah Wong would would split uh, time uh, between the two and the one. Uh, Cam McGusty, uh, that would give us our three guard starting lineup. But then Anthony Walker would move Cam to the two if he subbed for Harlan, and that would move Isaiah over to the one. And quite honestly, that group has never played together in practice with Isaiah at the one, uh, Cam at the two, and Anthony at the three, because normally uh, Harlan's at the one and, and Chris Likes is at the one on the other team, no matter which team they're playing for. You know, we normally are white and green. So one of them's running the white team, one of them's running the green team. It's it's just a fact. We have Wyatt Copeman from the Miami Hurricane up next. Wyatt. Hey, Coach. I know you mentioned Purdue really packing the paint with a lot of big, tall, skilled guys. Um, how do you envision maybe using a Dane Gack or Rodney Miller more to, to stop them instead of like a Walker, perhaps? You know, it, it's not uh, the question of should we use them more. The question is really, how can they help us? So if a guy is playing well, like I thought Dan Gak really played well the other night. I watched him in practice yesterday, and I mentioned to the coaches, boy, he is doing some additional things that can be very helpful to us. So it, it, it's not asking him to do more. It's just asking either Rodney or Dang to play really well. And in this particular case, Rodney's a five, Dan can play the four or five. And now that Anthony Walker has moved to the three, Dan Gack is likely to be Matt Cross's sub at the four spot. But Matt Cross and Dan Gack don't play the game anything alike. So we've got to make the adjustment. If we move uh, Matt out and Dan in, in the substitution pattern, we've got to consider what we do offensively and defensively that'll accommodate what we see Dang doing in practice that can help us against a team like Purdue that is so long and big in around the basket with Williams and Edie. We'll go now to Michelle Kaufman from the Miami Herald. Michelle. Hey coach, thanks for taking the time. Uh, two questions, one on, on Chris likes, has he, I know you haven't gotten the doctor's report yet, but has he been practicing or doing anything like what what has he been doing since the last game that's the first okay and then you want to answer that and then i'll tell yeah, you let me let me answer that first so okay the first thing is we took sunday off okay. we were very beat up after the game we had a number of guys dealing with some you know bumps and bruises that they needed to treat so sunday was a day off so nobody practiced sunday on monday we practiced but chris spent this whole time uh in, in treatment, working with our trainer, Corey, on trying to get the ankle stronger and better, more flexible. So um, he didn't practice. And so we, we uh, um, will wait to see what the doctor says of whether or not he can go today. Okay, thank you. And uh, my second question is on, is on Matt Cross. Um, what is it that you saw in him when you were recruiting him? And, you know, did you expect him to be able to step in, you know, as a starter, as a freshman and do what he's done so far? Okay, let, let's begin by what we saw. Uh, Matt Cross played for the BABC. That's the same AAU program as Bruce Brown. And we loved Bruce. We absolutely thought it is a a perfect Miami player, tough, hard-nosed defender, a conscientious student, a great guy off the court, a great teammate who his, his teammates love, his coaches love. Playing for the BABC, Leo Papil, his coach, said a lot of the same things about Matt. Tough, hard-nosed competitor, will work hard at the defensive end of the floor. A different skill set and Bruce, he's, he's more of a three-point shooter, uh, but he's physically ready to compete. Now, we didn't anticipate Matt Cross being in the start lineup because we anticipated Sam Wardenberg being back and healthy and using all of his experience. We anticipate Matt Cross being, you know, behind 
Sam, but now he's been thrust into the starting lineup and he's handled it extremely well. Hey, Matt, just want to know uh, what it's been like for you just starting off your college career, obviously getting thrown right into the fire as a starter, and uh, what your approach was once uh, Sam Wardenberg went down. Yeah, I mean, Sam was definitely a huge part of the team, and he was kind of the guy and still is showing me a lot of what the coaches like to see and what to do and what to expect, especially coming along with uh, going against harder teams soon. So um, with that, I mean, after he went down, I knew – me and Ant were kind of the guys to be in that spot. And um, after that, I mean, it's pretty much just been up to the coaches to decide what they uh, what they like and fighting for the spot. And not really because Ant's been kind of playing the three, too, for us. So, I mean, he's a very versatile player. So, honestly, it's just been moving a lot of pieces around and um, trying to fill that spot after Sam got hurt. Go to Michelle Kaufman from the Miami Herald. Michelle? Still on mute, Michelle. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, welcome to Miami, first of all. We'll get to meet you in person at some point. Um, I want to ask you, first of all, uh, why did you choose Miami? You had a lot of options. What was it about this program that brought you here? And then uh, the transition to, you know, piggybacking on the last question, but jumping in and having to be a starter from the very beginning as a freshman, um, you know, that's usually a huge transition for a player from high school to college. Uh, what's the transition been like for you? What's been the biggest difference from what you faced in high school versus what you're doing now? And, and just how would you assess your own play? Thank you. Yeah, so um, I would say answering the first question I chose here just because um, I tend to gravitate and um, – like get along with uh, older coaches on the other side than the younger side more often. And um, I just liked Coach L's values and what he stood for. And between Coach Caputo and him, they were very consistent in showing me that they uh, really wanted me and respected my game. And then with that second question, I would say starting right away, the biggest difference and uh, the hardest thing to learn is probably all the – all the little things like where to be when the ball is two passes away on defense, like different kinds of screens, um, knowing personnel, and um, just kind of more plays often in high school. It's kind of just like everybody gets it and goes and maybe one or two plays in high school. So it's a lot more to memorize too. Uh, right now I'm just trying to focus on play without thinking because I was doing a lot at the beginning when I first got here. Thank you. We're going out to Cal Friedman from WVUM. Cal. Matt, you've got a huge game coming up against Purdue. How's the prep been going into this game? Um, it's been good. Um, right now, we've been going over their personnel um, yesterday and kind of what we need to do against them because they're a very big team and how, how we're going to defend them along with um, the change and not, not big change for a lot of the older guys because they've been going through it. But for me, um, the past two teams and the first two teams I played against are zone. So this will be the first team that we think um, will be going man to man, and as long as and as we are too. So it'll be a full man to man game. So just knowing personnel again and how to um, prep for each player because it could be switching on to anybody. Like me and Ant especially could be switching on to a five, to a one. We tend to guard a lot of different players, so. Just knowing personnel, so every switch, I know what their weakness and what their strength is. Up next, we have Barry Jackson from the Miami Herald. Barry, go ahead. Hi, Matt. Coach L has said good-naturedly that you're our Duncan Robinson of the Heat. Uh, are you familiar much with Duncan? Have you guys ever met? And are there any NBA shooters that you've sort of tried to take things from their game or admired growing up? Um, yeah, so I don't – I've never spoken to or don't know Duncan Robinson at all, but um, – Coach Caputo and Coach L definitely show me a lot of videos and a lot of stuff that he works on um, with the Heat, along with something that he experienced at Michigan that they noticed I was doing and I still do that I'm trying to get rid of is um, just getting out of my own head because when I miss a couple shots in a row, um, you know, like they talk about the, the coaches here, talk about the numbers. If I miss two in a row, don't worry about it. The numbers say that I should make the next three or four. So just always uh, taking the good shots and the open shots 
and don't worry about the miss or make. Just always keep shooting um, my shot, which is my job here. Up next, we have Chris Stock from inside the U. Chris, go ahead. Yeah, Matt. Um, curious about Brewster Academy, the competitive environment there, what that was like for you. Did that help you prepare for this? And, and then also your relationship with Earl Timberlake. What's that been like? Yeah, so I would say um, and yes and no um, with um, Brewster, just because it's high school, so it's definitely different. But I would say yes because um, – it's more talented, I'd say, than most regular high schools. And it's a prep school too, which I'd say the difference between a prep school and regular high schools is um, more, more similar to college style play. And there's older kids you're playing against that, um, that are doing like reclasses or a prep year. So that should already be in college. So with the physicality too, um, you adapt quicker. And then my, I would say with Earl, it's very, we have a very good relationship, especially because a lot of the older kids live off campus or whatever it is. And me and Earl, um, our rooms are right next to each other in the dorm. So, I mean, we talk a lot. Every We have every class together but one. So um, we're definitely close off the court and on, and on the court. I mean, we're playing a pretty good well together when he was playing. But after he got hurt, I mean, it doesn't really change how much we talk because we still talk a lot off the court, too. So I'd say we have a good relationship. Now we have Wyatt Kopelman from the Miami Hurricane. Wyatt, go ahead. Matt, it seems like you've settled in quite well with the non-conference matchups. How do you look to translate that productivity into ACC play, especially with the team's added depth this year? Yeah, I would say um, keep just finding the open shots and the best shot. Don't force anything. Um, just from watching a lot of games, um, a lot of teams that shouldn't be losing to teams that or shouldn't be as close as, as it should. Um, I see a lot of freshmen tend to prove themselves by taking maybe four shots or stuff like that. So I think whether I get 10 or whether I get zero, just finding the open play, whether it's me or not, and spacing the floor so my guys can get to the hoop um, and trusting that they'll make the best plays. So uh, pretty much just staying within myself, I think, well, the game will come to me. Anthony, so you played your first two games of the season at the Watsco Center in front of an empty crowd, which is something that, you know, in your freshman year, you never would have seen coming. What's the experience been like with no fans in attendance? Um, I actually feel more comfortable. Uh, I, get, I get a little nervous before my games, but, like, just just seeing, like, just uh, my teammates there and my coaches are there, it's actually a little bit more comfortable. It is foreign, though. I do like to see uh, some fans. I'd like to see some familiar faces out there like, that I saw last year, but hopefully as the season goes on and we get this situation, the corona situation under control, we can have more more people in the, in the stands. Go to Michelle Kaufman from the Miami Herald. Michelle. Hey, thanks for doing this, for taking the time. Um, I wanted to ask you if you could just sort of compare, I know it's just been a few games, but this year's team to last year's team, it seems like uh, this team has a lot of balance. Yeah. Um, you have, you know, it seems like it's obviously a deeper team, more balanced scoring, and uh, Matt Cross has really come on as a freshman. Can you talk about him and, and also just in general the balance and how this team is different from last year's team? Yeah, Matt, Matt, Matt's great for us. He, come in, he comes in with a lot of energy and he comes in with a lot of confidence as well. So seeing him, seeing him thrive for these past couple games and these past couple practices as a freshman, is, I'm really happy to see that. And for the team, just, yeah, we're a lot more deep. We're bringing in a lot of new faces like Nas, of course, Matt, Earl, who is unfortunately injured, but he's getting better every day. So just having them in the gym with us every day just brings a different type of energy and a different type of light to the team. So we feel a lot more confident coming into this year. Go to Wyatt Copeland from the Miami Hurricane. Wyatt. Hey, Anthony, how are you? Um, how satisfied have you been with your increased role this season, especially in how that can potentially translate to ACC play and the team dominating more this year? Yeah, um, just coming into this year, I just had a different mindset. Like, I need to step up. Of course, with Sam going down, I need to step up. Matt needs to step up just in that position. So, yeah, um, I'm, I feel good. I feel confident going into this year, this conference play, playing tough for opponents. So hopefully I could, I could continue to contribute at a high level. Up next, we have David Fronis from the Sun Sentinel. David? Yeah, actually, I was uh, just about to ask uh, what you just brought up, uh, what your mindset was when, when Sam went down and just what you feel 
uh, you can provide in your game uh, to to fill in and you know in respect to what what you lose with Sam going out, and then also what uh, unique qualities you feel you bring to the lineup when you're in there. Um, yeah, Sam is a great player. So losing him losing him was was a uh, was tough for us, but. Me coming in, I feel like I could I could provide the same things, if not more. And he's not completely gone. He's on the sidelines with us. He's in practice every day. He's mentoring me. So just having him by my side is is better than not having him at all. So go to Christopher Stock from inside the U, Chris. Can you curious about the challenges with Purdue um, in their front court, particularly you know Williams can score, but Zach Eady, when you play a guy of that size, what are the challenges that that he presents? Um, yeah, he, uh, he's, he's going to be a problem, but we, 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 we have a game plan to, to, uh, to settle that. So we'll be, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. We know how to, uh, we know how to contain guys with his size. So I feel like we're, we're we feel pretty confident going into this game. So we'll be good. Go back to Wyatt Copeland from the Miami Hurricane. Wyatt. Anthony, how would you describe Coach Laranega's impact on you this season from a from a mentorship standpoint and, and just how he's helped you become more acclimated in the team's um, functioning on the court? Yeah, he, he he's like a father figure to me. Like, he, he really cares about me as a player and he cares about me as a person. So just having him in my ear, like, mentoring me, telling me what I'm doing wrong, telling me what I need to do on and off the court is, is, is great for me and it's helped me uh, improve as a player and as a as a person. So I really appreciate him for that.